Now, as you heard earlier, the respected Nigerian Civil Society Situation Room has called for the total cancellation of the governorship elections held in Kogi State on Saturday and has raised questions about the conduct of the ballot in Bayelsa State. Well, they're not alone. International observers from the EU and the US have also expressed grave concerns about those elections. They've issued a joint statement raising alarm over reports of the widespread incidents of violence and intimidation some of which their teams witnessed. They said they was, there was high evidence of levels of violence perpetra perpetrated by armed thugs in both Kogi and Bayelsa, vote buying by politicians, killing in some polling units and ballot box snatching. The Independent Center for Democracy and Development has also been commenting on the elections. Here is the human rights lawyer Femi Falana speaking earlier today at one of the events reviewing the latest governorship elections. Those who fought for the current rickety democratic process will not allow you to be derailed. Because Professor Jibo um, Ibrahim has alluded to the crisis in 1964 and 1983, which on both occasions culminated in the subversion of the electoral process by military power mongers, including the current president. I'm sure you know he was the one who announced the uh, destruction of the Second Republic, or termination of the Second Republic. Now, the way we are going, with people lose confidence in the electoral process, if you call for a revolution, you know where you find yourself. Well, for more, I'm joined now in the studio by the international journalist and African affairs analyst, Lindsay Barrett, who spent the last month covering the political campaign in Bayelsa State, and by the Abuja editor of This Day newspaper, Iyabosa Uwugiran, who's been overseeing the paper's coverage in both Kogi and Bayelsa States. Thank you for coming in. Straight away to you, uh, first, Iyabosa, allegations of mass rigging in Kogi, evidence of violence according to many, many sources, um, calls for the elections to be cancelled, particularly coming from the SDP party, Natasha Poti's party. Are those calls justified? Absolutely. Um, we, were, we were in um, Kogi and Baeza for the election. We, we deploy our reporters, our cameraman, cameraman there. And uh, the report they, they, they came back with uh, was quite uh, frightening. Uh, of course, we expected what happened, especially in Kogi, for example. Now, if you look at the, the, the antecedent of uh, the governor of Kogi State, for example, mm. uh, there's no way you were, you were not, I mean, there's no way you'd be surprised about what happened last Saturday in Kogi. Don't forget, in the last general elections, there was also huge violence in that state that led to the cancellations of results in about 169 polling units. And in spite of that, they declare result for the Senate and for the House of Reps. Now, for this election last Saturday, just about uh, three days to that last Saturday general elections, mm. the Inspector General of Police and all the security chiefs were in Kogi with the party leaders for a stakeholder meeting. And at that meeting, a group of talks came to that meeting and disrupted that meeting, where the Inspector General, the Director of SSS and Civil Defense Chief were present. As a matter of fact, the IGO police was tear gas by his by his boys. Unbelievable. And he could not do and he could not do anything. He could not do anything. Now, a day to the election, some group of armed security also tried to also attack the governor of uh, Oyo State, who is uh, the who is the, the the chairman in charge of the PDP campaign mm. in that state. Of course, they were resisted by by a group of people. Now, that gave a clear indication that the election in Kogi in particular was not going to be free and fair. So like I said, what happened on Saturday was expected because, mm. uh, because the security agencies that were supposed to you know, prevent what happened, you know, deliberately, let me use the word, deliberately you know, failed to do that. I just give you an instance sure. where Inspector General for Police and Director of SSA was present in an event, and a group of thugs entered that meeting and disrupted it. I think that makes it even more worrying. Yes. And, 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 and let me bring you in, um, 
Lindsay Barrett. We're going to talk about Bielsa a little bit later, but just, I know you've been across the developments in Kogi State, yes. in the senatorial elections, for instance, yep. in that state, Dino Malaya claimed that helicopters were used to open fire, fire with live rounds on voters. Tear gas was allegedly dropped from these helicopters, and his, he says his nephew was, was killed. killed. What are you hearing about that? Well, exactly what you're saying is what, it's the general news. Mm. But what is most frightening is the fact that INEC seems totally helpless to even comment, much less take a stand against irregularities, which are clear for everyone to see. It seems that the Nigerian electoral system has broken down completely. Mm. And I don't feel good, but I must say that I have been saying this for months prior to the elections. While I was observing in Bielsa, what I saw was that people were generating disenchantment with government up to the elections, and they took advantage of this disenchantment, which we must admit there is mm. quite some substantial disenchantment. The governor has done a lot of infrastructural development, but unfortunately, over the eight years, there was a breakdown of communication between the executive and the public service. Right, but in terms and of the conduct of those elections, you know, do, do, do you, because I mean, the, 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 what the, happened in Kogi State seems fairly clear to most people, and you've got people across the board condemning it. Were they that, was that that level of irregularities? Even, they were even worse, but much better covered, concealed right. in Bielsa. All you have to do, Charles, is look at the results which people say have been written. For the first time, Nembe local government mm. said only 800 people voted for PDP, and 84,000 the highest number of voters in the state, higher than the capital, it has never happened before. So when the result is given by INEC, one wonders whether INEC doesn't take into, you know, preclusion right. into, into consideration. And, and just These numbers in. are not credible. Sure. And just bringing in Iyabosa again, uh, there's been a lot of talk that in Kogi State, for example, that um, holding the senatorial rerun election on the same day as the governorship election hurt people like Dino Malaya. How much um, it, is, did that come into play? Well, I, I think uh, those who arranged that, uh, uh, maybe, for example, Anik, maybe have done that because they wanted to save costs, you mm. know, by freezing the election for the um, uh, same day. But if you look at the turnout of voters, in that uh, in that area, I mean, it was obvious that the people were ready, you know, mm. to elect their, their their choice. I mean, were ready to pick their choice. But unfortunately, what happened? The same uh, the same uh, the same strategy they used. Mm. They went to Dino Minai's uh, uh, stronghold, for example, and disrupted the election there. And in the process, I, I, I'm told that one of his election was killed and he was buried mm. was buried there uh, yesterday. That is just deeply, you know, profoundly yeah. sad. And I also, mean, the, the national public secretary of the of the PDP, Kola Olabodinho, is mm. also from there. And I'm told that in the entire world of uh, Kola, they cancelled election there because they wanted to reduce the the, vo the, the votes of uh, 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 Dino. Although the election was, uh, I mean, declared inconclusive, but as I speak to you. Uh, Smart I mean his opponent, is mm. leading with almost about 20,000 votes. We were the election that were canceled there. I mean, the result that, that were canceled is about 43,000. So in the next, in the next run, somebody's already suggesting that uh, where they were going to, they are going to apply the Oshun, Oshun strategies. Mm. And of course, most of the PDP supporters would not be encouraged to come out to Absolutely. vote on, on that Absolutely. day. So they've already been disencouraged. I mean, they've already been uh, disencouraged. I mean, they've been humiliated. You know, uh, intimidated. So in the, in the next reroll, you will not see many of them. That is and so it is obvious that uh, the PDP is going to win that uh, senatorial sure. uh, which, district. Which is exactly what has happened in Bayelsa. Well, th I was going to say yeah. about Bayelsa that mm. a, a lot of allegations have been leveled against the APC yes. in, in the state. I mean, they were not the incumbent. Mm -hmm. 
they they were so it's a bit astonishing it doesn't seem to fit the sort of the usual because pattern the level in, in, in of intimidation Nigeria. in the lead up to the campaign right. meant that there was virtually no election you mean like federal intimidation yeah. because of course it, the well, APC controls it, 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 the, as I the federal said, structure the APC Nigeria. took advantage of a widespread sentiment of disenchantment right. with the governor and pushed this idea until we saw violence break out before right. the election. On election day, no PDP man was brave enough to show his face in Nembe, and that is well known. In other parts of uh, even in Yanagoa, I'm told. Nevertheless, the APC mm -hmm. won in six of the local governments, so That's it's not just Nembe, obviously. I mean, what, what I'm the, the APC deny those allegations, and, and mm -hmm. they say that in fact, as, as if you look at local governments like Nembe, mm -hmm. the only person who was killed there, according to them, was an APC person. What, what do you make of all of that? I, I, I don't know that. There was a driver of the radio station there whom I know personally who died. And I don't think he was a right. APC. Okay, let me, let me bring in Iyabosa Wugier in there. Let's talk about Bielsa briefly. The PDP has, of course, been in charge of that state um, in, since 1999. Their primaries were very divisive, lots of division and very little reconciliation as they went into this election. Lots of talk of candidates being imposed on the party by the governor. How much did all that hurt the PDP? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you that uh, there were irregularities in Bayasa, mm. especially in the Saturn job, you know, where the candidate of the APC is from. Uh, if, if you look at the results they declared there, it was obvious that uh, it was tempered with. I mean, the, 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 the mandatory people were, were, were tempered with. But however, I've also discussed with so many stakeholders in that state. And if you listen to them, you, you will easily agree that it was uh, the governor of that state that defeated, that defeated a, a PDP, not really the people. <laughs> uh, because uh, if you look at what happened, Jonathan, the former vice president, I mean, the former president is from there. There has been that, you know, that, that attempt, you know, right. to undermine the former president. Let me give you an example. And Any that has, uh, unfortunately, I can't go, I must take a break, but that is absolutely fascinating, particularly the Jonathan elements. But Iyobosa Uwugiran and Lindsay Barrett, thank you very much.